Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm design journalist Bethan Ryder and we've got a cracking conversation for you today with Sue Jones, co-founder and creative director of OCA and the rather fabulous French interior designer Vincent Daré, who's joining us from Paris. Bonjour Vincent. Hello everybody. Um, I'm in Paris. Hope to see London very soon. <laughs> I'm just going to talk a little bit about Vincent before I move on to say hello to Sue. So Vincent started his career in fashion, but segued to interiors and now creates theatrical and surreal residences and spaces, drawing on references that range from the Baroque and classical to Dadaism, the work of David Hicks, Carlo Molino and more. He says he doesn't follow any rules, but likes to do his job with humour and eccentricity. He says people want to be surprised and want to dream. These are, all doubt, these are all no doubt reasons why Sue Jones, co-founder and creative director of OCA, decided to, a collaboration with Vincent was in order and would be a splendid idea. I don't need to introduce OCA, I'm sure, to all of you watching today, but this much beloved English brand has just celebrated its 21st anniversary. And like Vincent, it's all about avoiding uniformity in trends and about giving its customers the confidence to create rich, colorful, comfortable interiors with its collection of beautifully made furniture, lighting and objects that demonstrate a mix of influences that are equally at home in a period property or a modern apartment. So hi Sue, where are you calling in from today? I'm in the countryside um, and trying to avoid thunderstorms like you. Um, beautiful day now, thank goodness, uh, and very green outside. So um, uh, it, it's a lovely evening. Yeah, I'm hoping the rain doesn't disturb the sound. Um, before we kick off, I just want to cover some housekeeping. This talk will last about 45 minutes and the recording will be available afterwards and Oka will share that with you all via email. So I'd love to start with you, Vincent, because I understand this is your very first collaboration with a UK brand, which is super exciting. I know you're a fan of English culture. I'd love to hear about your first impressions of Oka when you visited the store. Um, well, I'm, I'm, when you, uh, of course, I love uh, English taste, and uh, it was a surprise because it's only the culture, I mean, my mentality for the brand, from the English brand. It's a mix of classic with uh, a modern, but not so too much, because I don't like modern things. It's for, uh, for me, I prefer the past and not some in the plastic. I don't like plastic, I mean, okay, not plastic. And um, it's great because it's a mix with ethnic, with like a memory of ethnic, like Kashmir, and uh, very uh, country uh, culture English, cottage. And this is for me, it's like a Bloomsbury and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's feeling very, similar of my, of my test, because what I like, it was to, to work with people. I like the test too, not the contradiction of my work, but it was great because I'm very surprised when the Oka uh, asked to me to make a little capsule and uh, very proud too, because it's my first collaboration with an English label. And uh, I love it because, uh, it was in the, in the center of London and every tree is a garden. It was a, a beautiful day. And I see the old ladies, beautiful dress in, with an English taste. And I say, wow, it's been really cool to have this collaboration. Fantastic, you're lucky you had a sunny day. Um, <laughs> Sue, Oka is very much about eclecticism mixed in heirlooms with new finds and that joy of feeling confident about styling your own home. And I think that's something Vaston really exudes. So what appealed to you when you first visited Maison Dare? Oh, first things first, his beautiful green corduroy suit. <laughs> I fell in love with straight away. Um, I, went, I went to Paris um, and uh, went to his atelier of the Rue Royale. And what I adored about it, it is a, a beautiful, old French building round a courtyard uh, with wonderful um, original features. I especially remember the floor. Um, and it was, um, again, a beautiful day. And what I adored about it all, it's with this beautiful classic rooms. Um, he had his uh, collection of very eclectic, 
beautifully designed pieces, which really made me uh, feel excited because it doesn't, when you have an old building, you don't just have to fill it with old pieces. It's all about how you mix things up and how you uh, make them come to life. Uh, and so for me, that was absolutely incredibly exciting because I thought it was brave and fun and something our customers would thoroughly enjoy. Um, uh, hopefully because they're slightly British eccentric and they really understand that sort of mix of mm. product and style. So a collaboration is always a dialogue and I wondered um, with Vincent whether you gave him carte blanche or what the kind of process was um, when you started speaking about that what the collection would be soon what did you what was your brief um well my, my first of all i will say that i wouldn't dream of giving uh, vincent d design advice because he doesn't need any he's <laughs> so full of uh, 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 of ideas um but i suppose i wanted something that we could market easily in terms of being able to photograph it together and made sense together so we we talked about all sorts of things but uh rugs etc as well but i think we decided we wanted to keep it quite tight and we would uh, gear it towards smaller homes uh high impact uh, pieces that you that note you noticed um and uh, looked really good together so that, that's where we came down to the four pieces uh, in the end, and uh, then Vincent took it away. So what's your process, Vincent? Because I know that you still love to actually sketch and, and create watercolours. So could you talk us through your kind of um, inspiration and, and how you work and how you kind of came up with these four pieces? Uh, you know, every time I have a, I have a new project, I, um, I think like a, a filmmaker, and not like a decorator or designer. And um, it's like I make a, a little scenario of what is it, this piece, and what is, is great to come in a world of Oka. Because what is important, it's a, a mixed, like to say, it's a mix of all my world and the Oka world. And um, I starting to think and to say, oh, maybe it's like, French Versailles coming in London. And uh, the ambassador is Jean Cocteau because Jean Cocteau is my guru. And I say, well, I think this is a great mood because it's like some memory of French story and mixed with the England story. And I know for the beginning, uh, the English people loved Versailles and by so many things after the revolution. And I think maybe it's a great mood to go in this street. And you've decided to keep these pieces black and white. Can you talk about that a little bit, and your reason for that choice? Uh, because I, for me, it was, I'm very colorful normally. And like Sue say, I'm velvet green and normally I'm so many color. And for this case, I think, no, uh, and make something black and white like this. It's more easy to mix with the Oka color. And I think it's like a, a memory of the old movie in black and white, like, you know, Jean Cocteau, La Belle et la Bête. And I think, well, um, you know, when everything come in in my head for the different inspiration and coming in the focus about what's happening. But it's not, when I, I walk, I design like this, like um, with a white page, and I, I don't think too much. I let my inspiration go with a win, like au temps porte le vent. And after I say, well, I have only this piece, because what is difficult in five pieces to, to explain a story of a style for a car. And in this case, I said in black and white, we have focus and is only this piece go together, but it can go for every piece in the Oka collection. Mm, and it makes them, I think, it helps them feel much more classic and timeless as well, I think. Yes, um, exactly. Yeah, I'd love to dive in to talk about each piece um, in more detail. I think it would be really great to start with the lyric. I love the names of, of all these pieces as well. The lyric console, which looks very adaptable um, and sort of an easy piece to use in lots of places. But can you tell us about that and the materials you've used there and why? 
uh, because uh, I think in Oka, it's great to have a big marble black because it's like huge piece for a console. But what is great when you see the console is the proportion is not big, but it's a, um, an elegant proportion. And for me, it's like a lyric theater and is a door of this theater. And it's the beginning of the story. It's you, you coming in this door and you coming in the fairy tale of the story of the Oka collection. And I love, yes, you say I love this title. Every piece I do it, I make a title like a poesy and a lyric console. And I like it because uh, this console is making like a, a piece uh, come for the um, uh, archaeologic uh, Roman colon, but mm -hmm. cut it like in a modern mood. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love this mix because I love when it's something from the past coming from the modern mood. And Sue, you, obviously you know your customers really well. Where do you see this sort of fitting into people's homes and what, what do you love about this piece? Well, I, I, I mean, I'm asked all the time because in, in London especially, uh, there, there are a lot of smaller spaces to, to accommodate. Um, um, quite apart from anything, anything too big, you can't even get up the stairs or through a door. But for me, this piece was an ideal piece for um, a hallway because it has the double um, it has it has the double function of being you know extremely stylish and setting the mood of the whole apartment and on top of that everybody needs a whole table or a, a console in the hall so for me it's about setting the tone of, of the style of the house um, and I, I love the impact of it. I love the idea of it in a downstairs loo as well. Kind of absolutely, absolutely. And I, I, you know, I'll go back to slightly my more boring side, which is a bit of symmetry as well. And I love symmetry, I can't help it. Uh, but I, I, I see them in pairs as well, you know, either side of a fireplace or, or, or in a larger space too. Yes, for those people with the lovely big country houses, it's perfect. Exactly. Um, so, and then I think let's talk about lighting because you have a lovely floor light, light lamp too, Vincent. And I know that you talk about maison scène and film and theatrical inspiration. So I'm assuming lighting is incredibly important to you. So I just wondered what your sort of lighting rules are before we start to talk about the spiral lamp, which is also part of the collection. Do you have some rules, Vincent? Uh, yes, uh, for me, light is very important. And uh, I don't like what, when you're coming in this uh, room and you have the light in the same uh, a, a big light and yeah. no little light in the disparate in the room because it's so aggressive. And I have so many friend actresses and she, when she's coming and the light is not good, it's like, ah, no, change this light, it's so strong. And for me, it's very important and I think every decorator uh, try to do this uh, to don't have a light coming from the comment dit, plafond ceiling. ceiling, but light from the part of the house. And uh, sometimes a little, sometimes big, sometimes a lampadario. And this one, I like it because it's a, it's a difficult exercise, you know, the lamps. And uh, I love this one because it's like a mythical uh, Tower of Babel. And in the hand, it finished like a spiral with this abajur. And um, I, I like it because uh, it's something poetic, lyrical, theatrical, but in the same time, it's easy to have in a house. And it's very not normal because I'm not feeling like a normal people, but in the, you can mix with all this different furniture. And uh, you see in, the, in this picture, you see in the old building, it's perfect. You don't see it's something new and something um, make you uncomfortable with the style. I like this collection because it's, uh, it's mixed very easy with antique or modern. Sue, tell me what you feel about the light. Cause I know it's got this extraordinary shade which spirals was that sort of a was that a tricky one? It's it's what's your well, I I love Vincent's description of it himself, but I have to say my my first impression was it was rather like one of my favourite Philip Treacy hats. Oh, 
<laughs> and I almost wanted to wear it. Um, and so I, I adored that. And we we all know um, in the business that, that it has been one of the most difficult things to make is it's all beautifully handmade. And w with stitching and finish work like this, it has to be absolutely perfect otherwise it just doesn't work um and and we uh it, it, it is delicate and, and beautiful but it really really sets off the very very unusual uh column which uh, i will say is a very interesting height it's, it's not as high as some floor lamps are sometimes but it is the perfect height for beside a chair uh, and it gives a really beautiful uh, glow. So um, for me, it, 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 it's, it, it's almost like a model. And it, and it conceals the bulb, because I know that's one of your bugbears, Vincent. You don't <laughs> like the bare bulb. Hide the bare bulb, right? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, I love Sue when she says she's like her art of um, Philip Tracy. For me, the <laughs> best designer of art. And in England, you are so... Uh, you have the, the king of the heart because you have the queen with the heart every time. But I love because uh, it's like my memory from fashion. When I love work with Carl, it was Philip Tracy makes the art for Chanel. And I love the parallel and paragon of fashion and furniture and decoration. And uh, I'm so happy. <laughs> and this too, light, it's so aggressive. When you don't have abajur, it's like you are a depressed person. Yeah, it's impossible. A light um, was from the ceiling. From the ceiling, but how do you say? A bubble a lamp. Pool. I don't know what well. do you say. Sorry for my English, a barbar English. And, <laughs> I think you're right when you say it's a bit like a model suit because it makes me think it could be in My Fair Lady or something. Like well, yes. exactly, exactly that. Audrey Hepburn. It yes. is, you know. <laughs> It is absolutely. It's Cecil Beaton makes the dress and all exactly. the costume. I love it. This movie It's one of my favorite movies. Yes. Me too. <laughs> so I know, Vincent, you've already mentioned Jean Cocteau is one of your um, muses. So I, th I think this takes us nicely onto the vase, which is the Gemini vase, which um, embodies a little bit of Cocteau, I think. And I think I love this piece. It doesn't even need flowers. Can you tell us about this piece as well? Uh, well, this piece, uh, um, you know, uh, this piece I dreamed for so many years to make it because it's two profile of two gemelli and is from the antique culture of Roman of Greece as uh, this in the historic um, uh, vase. And I like it because it's like uh, a story of a fairy tale of Jean Cocteau because every time Jean Cocteau speaks about the miroir, the double personality, and uh, this vase is a resume of this story. And I like it because it's uh, geometric in the same time, baroque in the same time, mm -hmm. and uh, dramatic. When you put the flower, it's like a fontaine, it's like a king of this house. And um, what I like it because it's mythical, it's, it's, it's from the mythology, and Jean Cocteau loves so much the mythology. And uh, this one has this inspiration, but it's like at the same time, you see like a draw. It's like a Cocteau or Picasso makes this vase. And this is a very a big homage of my, my heart. And what is great is make it uh, from the French artisan, and uh, what Sue say, it's reality, it's true. We make so many attention for the details and all this uh, object make like a haute couture object. And this is very important because my, um, I like the art decorative and uh, this, I like when the piece have uh, no age and this from all the epoch, you don't see when it's come from but you see the quality of the object. I love the styling here because you can see how it's got those many sides. It's almost like three vases in one or, or something. Um, Sue, it's, a, it's very reasonably priced as well. It's the sort of piece you could just sort of go and take home. Was that important that there was, um, if you like, a very accessible smaller piece in the collection? 
Well, it, it, that is always an important factor. Um, and with this, this particular vase, I didn't even begin to think about it as something that would actually be used as a vase um, because it was an object in its own right, as far as I was concerned. But when I saw it styled with the mimosa, which is a, a, a flower of, which is very evocative anyway, and not, not so much used in, in the UK as it is in, uh, in France, where it's a sort of national plant. Um, with the bright yellow coming out of the top, it, you know, it took my breath away. Uh, but then on the other hand, if you just put it quietly on, on, on its own, on a, on a table, it's a very calm, serene piece, which you can turn around, to a different view each day if you want to. And it has something really piercingly uh, beautiful about the faces. So for me, it, it was it's one of my favorites. Yeah, it's got a lot of character. It really brings a uh, character to a room. Um, let's talk about the really grand hero piece, I think, uh, the Couture's um, mirror, which is incredible and uh, yeah, really, really beautiful that mixes kind of antique glass with um, I think plaster ceramic motifs um, in there as well. Looks like you really had fun with this one, Vincent. What, tell us how complicated it was uh, and what, what you're kind of, what you were thinking you wanted to create because I know there's references there to Versailles again. Yes, Versailles, of course, because you see uh, uh, la, le Palais des Glaces, no, la, la Galerie des Glaces and in Versailles, it's very important because the sun is like the king of sun and the sun coming in the end of the day and you have only the reflex of the crystal and the mirror in this big corridor. And I would like to have some homage of this, but not gold. And uh, uh, this, the mirror, we, I love it when it's make before, you know, in the 18th siècle, it makes this mirror with the mercure. And what is great because you don't see and you see, and uh, it's like the antique mirror. And mm -hmm. I like it because it's like we, were, we have, we found some old Baroque piece from the old mirror, and we put like this, like um, an insect, like this, very like, an, an, comment tu dis nuage? Clouds. Like clouds, white clouds like this with the sun, and the lyric movement with the, uh, some uh, violin, something from the theater too, because it's Versailles, he has a big, very beautiful theater. And, uh, but not, uh, what I like in this mirror is not obvious, is not uh, aggressive of uh, 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 opulence, but mm -hmm. it's a discreet, like you see, like you have a mirror in your memory. It's like a dream, it's not like a reality. It is very fairy tale. I mean, I can imagine it next to a unicorn. Like, isn't that how you <laughs> can sort of imagine it uh, with unicorns either side? Um, but it's, it's important when the life is like a fairy tale, you know, because the blancheness, Snow White, and uh, miroir, miroir, dis-moi la vérité. And this uh, miroir, people have um, a great. Um, feeling with miroir sometime and sometimes not good. But what I like because every people and the miroir, it's one of the important pieces in the house mm -hmm. because it's like a, a window from the past or from the uh, mentality, the dreams. About. And I finish, I speak too much, sorry. <laughs> no, it's lovely. Um, <laughs> it, yeah, it's beautiful. So, Sue, what do you love about this mirror? I think it's, is it one of, is it your favorite thing? I think so. I mean, uh, um, as I always say, this is not a mirror for putting your makeup on uh, okay. with. But for me, this is exactly the sort of thing that makes me feel incredibly proud of, of, of you know, uh, and it's one of the best parts of, of my role and my job is to to try and, and, and encourage people to use some of these old skills uh, and, and put in a, in a modern way. Um, and you know, antiquing glass is, is, is one of them, and, and the plaster work is another. Um, for me, um, over the years, I, I, I use more and more um, mirror uh, and old mirror as, as, as 
almost a painting rather than a practical use. I mean, wh whether you can see your reflection well in it or not is I I irrelevant in, in a piece like this. Um, and it, 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 of course, it still reflects the light and, and um, it gives an, an impression of more space. But, but for me, um, this, uh, this is as good as having a painting on a wall. It's something I could look and look and look at. I mean, it's a little bit like, it makes me think of a really elegant version of the kind of beautiful shell work that you've um, done sometimes. You know that that feeling of um, sort of uh, shell grottos, there's a sort of, but a very elegant version. It's got that kind of intrigue about it. Yes, and a bit Brendan Gibbons, you know, the, 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 the wooden carved work. I mean, th there's a lot of skill got, gone mm -hmm. into this uh, and, you know, how amazing that people can still do this. Uh, as Vin Vassal said, you know, probably theoretically, correctly, it should perhaps be in gold. And we saw a finished piece in gold, but we felt very strongly that this should reflect the monochrome. And it's a, it's a bit more unusual uh, a, a, and a bit more striking because of it. And I think it's one of those pieces that you'll see a new thing in it every time you look. I can yes. imagine sort of discovering new little details. Um, exactly. Well, sorry, you. I, I, this isn't. This wasn't in the list of questions, but I just wanted to talk just briefly. I know that you very much like to keep these crafts alive, like decorative. Um, this is important to you, mm -hmm. I believe. Like that, you keep these French, um, these sort of traditional crafts going. Uh, yes. Um... Every time I, I think about my work, uh, I'm not feeling like a designer because the name is very modern for me. I'm feeling more like an art decorative um, work. And uh, what every time I think, uh, it's, um, I have so many uh, references in my head from all, all the architects, all the decorators in the past, like Emilio Terry or like, uh, uh, if you have in England, you have this amazing David X too. He makes a modern and the old too with the color. And, the, and uh, look at my question. It's an homage to David X. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, uh, and um, what I try in my work is not to, to do something you, you hurt uh, people. I think more about what is great to have in your memory and uh, you're feeling yeah, like a family and not uh, like modernity uh, hurt your, uh, your interior. Mm -hmm. And um, what I'm very proud in this project, it's the first time I have the cover of the world of interior with a piece of Oka, the miroir and the console. And uh, for me, it was a very lucky sign because um, first time I was, I work with Inglade label, and first time I have the cover of World of Interior. For well, everything, I say thank you to Sue, because it's like, um, you know, when you meet people and you're feeling like it's a family and uh, you, you say, oh, I'm happy because I make a great um, collaboration. Mm. I think there's, um, there's obviously synergy between you both, and I think possibly, I know you've both worked in fashion before you came to interiors, which I think is really interesting. Uh, Vincent, you had stints at Yves Saint Laurent, Prada, Chloe, Fendi, you ran Machino. I'd love you to tell us a little bit about what you think you've carried with you from those days into interiors. I know you work with Karl Lagerfeld. What kind of things from the fashion world do you feel you've kind of carried into interiors? Um... The, the first thing when you speak about Karl Lagerfeld, it was a, a, I'm very, when I work with him, I discover what is very close decoration and fashion because he changed all the decoration, like he changed the mood of the dress. I'm not like this, but it's, you know, he coming and uh, sometime he make an apartment very like uh, Vian taste and after he's changed and everything is modern. And I say, this is a great, mood to think not decoration it's blocking but it's like a story of the society fashion and decoration are very close for this and after what is coming for me from fashion the test of color mixed of print 
because uh, I'm, I know normally architects don't use so much the print. I design all my print and I like it and make, uh, I love the wallpaper. And you see in the picture with make with uh, for the Oka, the miroir, I make this wallpaper like a suite in the, in the Ritz. And um, this is from the fashion because uh, I don't fry, come on, did you You're not scared. I'm not scared about mixed color. Normally, you know, people say, oh, don't do with the green, with the purple. But when I see the show of Yves Saint Laurent, he makes all this color and I say, wow, this is very courageous. And I see in England too, he has this taste, you know, with the yellow, because maybe the light in England is not so strong like we have the sun in France and you need this color. And what I'm very admirative of the English taste, it's, just, it's just this, uh, this palette of painting, it's very different about the French taste. It's more eccentric. What I like in England, it's eccentric. And um, this is very to the fashion when we speak about Stephen Jones and all these eccentric people like Edith Sitwell. And um, the, I, this is very from fashion because I remember John Galliano make all this uh, show with all this reference. And I think from fashion is the, is the same because in decoration, I make all this reference and I, I do a scenario with a mix of my uh, reference. Mm, exactly, like create a whole world basically. Um, Stu, you also worked in fashion. You worked with Jasper Conran, which must have been amazing. He's someone that loves sort of antiques. What did you, what did you learn from, from Jasper, your time with him? Well, probably not a great deal about fashion, but Jasper taught me um, so much about colour and style, um, you know, as I often find with very creative people, that they can carry their creativity across uh, all aspects of their life. Uh, and Jasper had a, an extreme um, uh, colour perfection, I don't know what the word is, but his eye for colour was absolutely spot on. And he, um, you know, he loves his homes. Um, he taught me as well that, that fashion in a way is not, it, it, it's not something that's just transitory. Uh, you know, he, he, he taught me about quality and style. And so when I moved into interiors, I found it very easy to, um, to, 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 to swap over that, that, that ethos so that, that my, my way of it, uh, decorating is, is not that it's a trend or all here today and gone tomorrow. It's about building up um, the way uh, you, you, you love and do things, adding to it, not just chucking it out because it's not in as a colour this year. He, he always said to me, you know, your, your best colour is your favourite colour. Uh, and, and again, that's all about finding your own level of confidence and, and, and what you like, not just always being told what to do. And, and that's what we try and do at OCA is, is give people the confidence uh, so that the choices they make, they're very happy and relaxed with. And, and uh, that's a very satisfying part of our, our job. I know both of you have, have sort of said that you don't like to have rules, but I, um, I'm going to push you both because I know there must be some. So um, I'm going to ask you first, Sue, uh, you know, there must be some things you never do or, or there must be some sort of rules for when you're thinking of creating a space. And I know colour would be a part of that. Well, colour for me is, is important, but I'm not, I'm not terribly good at putting a lot of colour on the walls. I prefer to work with a fairly neutral background and bring the colour in from the objects, mm -hmm. uh, the cushions, and especially things like books. I don't, I, I think you can't have too many books in a, in, in a house. And so that's really how I, I like to, to, to decorate. Um, I think that, that there are, are rules and there are, nothing is actually wrong. Um, I think uh, people do like to feel that 
they're not going on the wrong tangent. So my advice would be to find your style and, and stick with it, uh, whatever it is. Um, uh, enjoy it. It's not to be too precious. Uh, live in it. You know, it is somewhere for you, not just to show off. Um, and, you know, try things. Um, uh, and, you know, that's what we've always had with Oco is that you can buy things and try them at home and see what see what you think and, and uh, um, uh, sort of uh, extend the boundaries a little bit, be a bit brave, uh, is what I always say. I think this period has really shown a lot of people that it's really important, as you say, it's not about showing off. You've got to be pleased with your home for you. We've all been here working and living in our homes. And um, it's I know it's where I've spent any money. This I'm sure your customers have been um, flocking to ochre over this period. It's been very good for, for homewares and things. Um, Vincent, what about you? Now, I know you like to intrigue and delight and make people dream, but are there any things... Um, rules for you. I know you've even said bad taste is okay. Uh, yes, but I completely uh, I completely agree with what she says, Sue, because I think when she says the personality of people is more important. What I don't like is when we speak about bad taste and good taste, and uh, people are uh, afraid, on dit peur? afraid afraid of bad taste. And he make a beige, a uh, console in the Bois Merisé, a black and white picture with some orchidae. And he thinks this is great. We don't see a taste, but it's like an hotel. It's not your personality. What I prefer when I see a bad taste, when we, but with very courageous and funny and naive taste. What I don't like is what people are so pretentious and think what I have the good taste. I don't think I have the good taste because I, Sometimes I'm very dangerous about this, but what I like it, it's um, it's when I go in a, a little home of in the country and I see oh it's cute she's put a vibe with some flower and you see the life when you don't see the life in the house you you lose your personality and after you like you dress you know it's like in fashion so you put all your same label, like a good sheet, all fit, Chanel, you don't have a taste. When you mix, it's like this, when you mix a piece, this is your personality. Find something in an antique market and I'll buy something new and you mix and this is coming uh, um, shallow, uh, not hot, hot is something different. Um, warm, warm. Warm's house and yeah. um, sh shallows and uh, poetic and, uh, you know, life is more important of uh, a bad and good taste. Yes, I think it's um, no to uniformity and uh, yes. yes to eclecticism and, and character and, and, and fun. I'd like to um, end on a little bit of a quick fire round, if you're both OK with that. Right, um, yeah. I wanted to ask you both each, uh, maybe Vincent first, what your favourite period of design is, if you could pick one. Oh, I love all the period because I love some of the 20s, world from the 40s, world from the 50s, 70s. I mix everything. For me, every epoch is good and I have something good for me. Okay, and Sue, are you going to pick everything too? <laughs> well, I, I, I could agree with that. Uh, but, it, you know, in terms of architecture, I'm a great fan of Georgian and Queen Anne architecture, for, for example. I love um, 18th century Nordic uh, Scandinavian pieces. I love um, uh, 18th century Ch ex Chinese export. So there are things from a lot of periods that... I, that I very much admire and, and I'm sure well I find this a difficult question to answer because I think that each period has ha, has its own qualities uh, and the fun is picking the best from each of them uh, and bringing them back to life again. Well there's been a lot of talk about us after this period of lockdown entering the roaring 20s so I think this capsule collection is kind of perfect for that celebratory mood that's that's sort of around the corner so i just wanted to have a bit of fun to ask if you had a soiree around this capsule collection um what you'd wear so sue what would you wear to compete with that lamp <laughs> well hats i bring 
<laughs> I'd ring Philip straight away and say, <laughs> make me a, a beautiful hat. <laughs> That's great. Um, and Vincent, I know you have an incredible wardrobe. What, what would you um, be wearing? Uh, well, because everything is black and white, maybe to see me, I make the green velvet jacket with a Great. white pants <laughs> for, for make happy Sue, because I know she's love it. But maybe I don't put the suit. I'm, I'm, I make only a, a velvet jacket, green. I love green. Green and blue, it's like um, uh, my color, favorite color. Yeah, and you can't go wrong with velvet. I mean, I love Oka's velvet cushions. Bit of yeah. green there. Yes, I like it. But you know, uh, people say after the prince, you don't can put the velvet. And uh, for me, velvet is like uh, every day I want a velvet, not when it's summer, of course. But in England, I think you can put a, a velvet in summer because not so hot, no? Yeah, we don't have <laughs> Exactly. So what um, what music would you like to hear, Vincent, with, at your soiree with the collection? Oh, my dream is I have a, um, a friend, Dan Fontaine. It's from Australia, and he has an orchestra. And he makes this, all this music from the movie, like Ipanema, something, you know, you're feeling like in the summer. Because for me, the best season is summer. Mm. Lovely. Sue, what about you? How, what would you like to hear? Well, I thought about this. Um, I, I think I think I'd have to have a bit of French, so perhaps a bit of Piaf, and mm. then maybe I don't know. I couldn't resist a bit of Frank Sinatra as wow. well. <laughs> and what would you be serving? I mean, I'm thinking because of the nice surreal feel, I'd want some lobster. But what about you, Vincent? Uh, my second nationality for my heart is Italian, and I'll, I'm crazy about Italian food. Pasta for me is the best. And uh, I think I make pasta, a big pasta for everybody. Because you know when, when you have so many guests, uh, you don't know who is coming. And you say pasta for everybody. Like in Italian, people say, not like in French, when you ask, what's happening tonight? Oh, you have a dinner. In Italy, it's a different. People say, what you do? Coming with me, you have a dinner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. We don't finish, and in the end, the table is big. And I think this is generosity. And I think if I make a, a cuisine for this day, of course, Italian. Oh, I love that. I definitely want to come to your house. Sue, ah, come you. <laughs> Sue, what about you? Well, I, I suppose Vasa will perhaps take this a bit more for granted because he, he, he's based in Paris. But whenever I go to Paris, I can't resist some of those wonderful restaurants that have these big bars and seafood, you know, with waiters uh, carrying great platters of oysters um, wow. <laughs> with shallots and vinegar and fantastic baguette of, of, of uh, that they only can do well in France. So I, I think that's the way I would go. Yeah. Uh, wonderful and decadent. I think we're all dying to travel again, aren't we? Um, who would you invite? Who would be your sort of dream guest, each of you? Sue, have you got a dream guest or one or two? Well, um, yeah, I, I suppose... Well, Vincent, of course. Oh. Um, uh, then I thought, well, I think Audrey ought to be there. Um, and I I would like to have an artist. So either for, for, for Vincent, I'd have Jean Cocteau or Picasso. Yes, I have the same. I say Jean Cocteau, and we have the collection is an homage for Jean Cocteau. And uh, we invite Marie Antoinette, mm -hmm. and we invite an Englishman, Shakespeare. I would like so much introduced to Shakespeare. I try, but it's impossible. I go to the church <laughs> and I say, Shakespeare, say me something. That would be a really fun party. Um, really fun. Um, thank you, both of you. It's such a shame we couldn't do this in person. I, I just, um, you know, really missing seeing people in real life or IRL, as everybody says. Um, but I just want to tell everybody that you can see the collection in real life um, at Oka's Chelsea and Guildford stores. So that's there in, in person. You can go see it. Please do. Um, and there are lots of details about the collection on Oka.com. And also below um, the live stream video window that you have here, there's um, you can go and see the collection there as well. So I can't wait to see it myself in, in person, although I do love your drawings that bring it to life as well. Um, Vincent. Um, so 
thank you everyone and um thank you for watching as i say au revoir vincent bye bye my god is a collection of oka vogue <laughs> bye <laughs> bye <laughs> bye sue goodbye goodbye, goodbye. goodbye. thank you bye. so much and come goodbye. and see us soon please yes i dream it's my dream to come in england and london excellent can't wait First of all. Okay, thank you for watching everyone. Um, and you'll be sent this video as I said at the start. Um, so you can catch it up again, watch it again. Thanks. Bye bye. Thanks, Bethan. Bye bye. Thank you.